Hey everyone, um, my name's Ross and I'm one of the two producers for ER and today I'm just going to I guess make my first tutorial. My buddy Eric already made a tutorial about uh, Flex Pavilion Scent if you watch that one. I'm just going to start out doing tutorials now for FL Studio in general and uh, start out with pretty basic stuff and then slowly get into more advanced stuff as we go on. Might eventually do tutorials about Ableton too, but uh, I mainly do all my work in FL Studio. I do use Ableton a little bit for some glitching and uh, just for some little stuff here and there, resampling. But today, uh, like I said, I'm going to just go over some basic stuff about FL Studio and I hope you guys like it. Subscribe if you like it and uh, here we go. Okay, so we're in FL Studio here. Um, I'm still on FL9 just because I haven't upgraded yet, but like I said, just going to go over some basics today. I'll go over, I'm going to make a bunch of tutorials here, so you guys can just follow along and kind of get better as I go with the tutorials. And today we're just going to do some really basic stuff and um, hoping that it can, just a little stuff can gradually start making your tracks sound sound better. I'm going to try to use the FL plugins that come with FL just because I know most of you don't have all the stuff that I have but you can do pretty much anything with any plugin. I mean some aren't as versatile as others but if you know what you're doing you can pretty much make any plugin do what another plugin can do if you know how to automate stuff and I don't know just linking different VSTs can result in really good things but yeah so today I'm gonna start off by talking about your sends I mean when I started out I didn't really know what a send even was or uh, I think they could be called return tracks or something in Ableton or something like that I don't know it really doesn't matter but anyways what you want to do for all your tracks is try to get everything sending to the reverb send and the delay send and that'll kind of create a un uniformity about the track and that way everything sounds like it's in the same room so some things you can send more of to a reverb send or you send um, say you want your really high lead you're gonna want more reverb on that than you're gonna want on your your bass sound just because I mean you want the highs to be you know emanating throughout the track you don't want the bass to be rumbling while the rest of the melody is playing and just muddying up the track. But, I mean, you're going to want the reverb send and the delay send, just in a nutshell. So, we'll get started with the reverb send, first of all. I like to use Fruity Reverb 2. I mean, it is, it's the reverb plugin that I use, even though I have a bunch of other ones. But, um, first start off by taking the dry all the way down, because you're going to have your dry track you're going to have that sending to the master over here and then you have it sending over here to the send so you want to up that to uh, whatever that's that's basically sorry excuse me but that's basically how much is sending to the reverb send so uh, so we're say, so say 20 percent to the reverb send so we got the reverb taking all the dry down so there's no dry coming through take the early reflection all the way down I don't like that and then just take the wet all the way up. You can have it, I don't know, I put it at 125, but some people, I don't know, put it at 100%, I guess. But whatever, I just put it up at 125. Um, start out, your low cut, you don't want it any lower than like 200. You could put it at 250, you could put it all the way up to 500. Depends on how, where you want it and how much bass you want with your reverb. Uh, I don't know, I, I typically put it around like 400 or even 450 because. I just like the brighter reverb sounds to come out on top. And then high cut, uh, somewhere around 5.5 or 6 kilohertz is usually good. Um, you don't want the really high stuff because then you kind of get like a ringing or really airy sound. and I don't know, That's just not good. But somewhere around 6 kilohertz. Uh, I usually do a, just a really little delay, like 10 milliseconds or 15 milliseconds, just to kind of... I don't know, it just kind of widens the track a little bit. I'm not going to really go into the detail about all the different things about the plugins and what they all do right now, but 
basically just go over some basic stuff. So I don't know, 20 milliseconds, 15 milliseconds, I don't know, 30. That's good. Just a little bit of offset, so kind of you know, widens the reverb sound. Size, anywhere around like 60 or 70 is pretty typical. I mean, you don't want a huge... I've never used... Maybe you do want 100 size for some, uh, some purposes, but I usually go around like 65, 70, 60. I mean, even 55 is sound pretty good. Uh, diffusion, I usually take the diffusion down to like 80-ish, 85, anywhere from like 70 to 90, sounds pretty decent. Um, bass multiplier, not really entirely sure what it does, but a sweet spot is, I mean, it obviously probably multiplies the bass, um, makes the, the, the bass sounds that are coming through the reverb a little warmer. Around 70, 175 is kind of like a sweet spot, I guess, that I've found. Any, anywhere in here is uh, good, I guess. Crossover frequency anywhere around 600, 700 hertz. Decay, decay is kind. Of, this is how long your reverb takes to decay, and around 1.5 seconds is usually good. You get over two seconds, it really starts like it sounds like you're in a hall or something like that. But 1.5 seconds is usually pretty good. I mean, from my experience. Sometimes 1.7, sometimes 1.3. Like I said, these are all just general uh, numbers to go by. And a high damping around like uh, around like five, six kilohertz. Obviously, it's damping sound that is above that frequency. So around six kilohertz is good. Again, I like to get a little stereo separation in my uh, my reverb. So I don't know, around 30 percent, 25 percent, just. Just a little bit to the left here. God dang, I'm just burping like crazy. Drinking some Mountain Dew here. Um, yeah, send. Okay, so we got the reverb send. I'll tell you how to get everything sending to the reverb and the delay tracks later. But anyways, so here we go. We're going to use Fruity Delay 2. Delay is really basic, but... So we got our reverb send. We're getting a delay send now. Again, you're going to take the dry volume here, you can take that all the way down, input all the way up. I like to go with ping pong, sometimes invert, Just, I don't know, I like to change it up, either one's good. Uh, ping pong's kind of cool, it bounces back from left to right um, in the panning positions. I like to take my input panning a little to the left or a little to the right, and that'll kind of give the ping pong effect, um, it'll kind of make it more prominent. But yeah, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. That'll just pan every sing every signal that's coming into the delay, either right or left, whichever way you, whichever way you put it. And then for your feedback, usually somewhere in the middle is pretty good. You can this is basically how long your delay goes for. So say you want it to delay, and you want it to go like whoa 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 whoa. whoa. You know, you put it like three seconds. If you just want like whoa whoa whoa, then you put it. You mean you turn the feedback feedback volume down? Uh, sorry for my awful singing there, but whatever. I guess <laughs> I had to get the point across. Um, definitely no Britney Spears or I don't know who's a good singer, Katy Perry. Um, the delay cut. I usually just keep that all the way up. I don't really have uh, any problems with that. Time. Usually for electronic music or most music, I don't know a delay time of three beats is pretty standard. I mean, you can make it four beats, uh, two beats. As you can see, up, it'll show up here when I move this. You can go, I mean, three beats is usually good. Um, that just means it, the delay hits every three beats, obviously. And then I like to, like I said with the reverb, like to make it a little wider by uh, putting a little offset on it. Around 10 milliseconds is usually pretty good. And that's basically all it is for a delay. Oh, and also for the delay, I like to uh, put a parametric EQ on the delay send, and then kind of just put a little little bump there around like 2400 or 2500 hertz. And that kind of, I don't know, just kind of makes the delay a little brighter, a little warmer. And then I also like to just, just cut out those low frequencies. But that's basically all there is for reverb and delay sends. Uh, now I'll show you... Uh, this will be the end of the first tutorial. 
but here I'm just gonna put in uh, put in a little uh, a little synth with citrus. You're gonna be amazed at how many presets I have here. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll just put in one of these plucks that I made. Uh, uh, wait, what am I doing? Okay, we want to take the delay and the reverb off here. But uh, okay, so we have this. We have that pluck, and uh, there's nothing on it right now, obviously. So we're gonna assign it a free mixer track. All these preset drums that come in here. I needed to make a template myself so I can. Uh, I don't just make tracks quicker, but usually I start out by making my drums, and then basically the mood that I create with my drums, and I go and start putting in some chords or something. But anyway, so we got the pluck here on five. To send it to the reverb track, like I showed you, you use this here. So we'll, uh, we'll, I'll play it, and uh, you'll kind of hear as I up the reverb on the send. So here we go. So uh, you can hear that, that sounds. I'm going to take this so it's not playing the whole time. But you can hear the reverb, obviously, after. Okay, so we got the reverb. That... Usually around 20%, that sounds pretty good. If you have the reverb set up to 125%, usually around 20% for the reverb send, sending to the reverb send is pretty good, at least for the leads and stuff like that. And then for the delay, usually you don't want as much being sent to the delay, but I mean around 10% is good, sometimes even 20% if you want a lot of delay on your, uh, your synth or whatever, uh, might be good. You just gotta play around with it again. So here we'll go. I still got the re reverb on it. We'll listen to the reverb and then I'll slowly add the delay in and you can hear what the delay is doing. So, I mean, there you can go. Usually, usually 10 is good. It's really light, but yeah, it's, it's enough to notice and it just kind of. I don't know, warms your sounds up a little bit. And yeah, so that's that's it for reverb and delay sends. Uh, I'll be back for another tutorial really soon, and I'll talk about something that I will tell you at a later date. Uh, thanks for watching, subscribe if you like this, and there will be a lot more to come. Hope you all have uh, some good music. Definitely send it to us if you use our tutorials and make some tracks, we'd love to hear what our listeners are making. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.